So Greg, we're gonna keep talking about uh, biology today and another video, but I wanna really focus today on soil and where all that biology lives around root structure and um, you know there's a lot of different soils out there in the world and a lot of different sort of properties that they can have um, depending on where they're located. Yeah, certainly, uh, you know, soils develop over time through, you know, effects of weather. Um, but the, one of the biggest determinants of the soil that will develop is the parent material, right? It's the rock that's there that has weathered and broken down through chemical and biological action. Um, and so that really sets you up for what you got, right? Whether you, you know, and the age of your soil, so how much it's weathered. Uh, and that, and so a soil is defined as the relative proportions of sand, silt, and clay. And yeah, so that, that's really important, right? There are those three sort of components. And um, people at home can actually use just a simple jar test with some, some water and a little bit of surfactant to, to actually see how big the layers are and know what their uh, soil composition is. Yeah, anybody can simply do that at home and that actually gives you a lot of information. It's not, well, look at those cool three layers that settled out in there, but um, they really tell you on how that soil is going to behave and perform, right? Yeah, exactly. how, how well it holds moisture, how readily it drains, um, whether it's uh, susceptible to compaction. Yep. Yeah, I mean, there's so many important things that can come out of soil quality, especially for those outdoor growers. I think this is probably a good point to remind our uh, viewers that a lot of people say they grow in soil, and really what they mean is they're actually in a soilless mix. So soil, like we've just been talking about, is actually outdoors, um, you know, what you can see in the landscape. A soilless mix is gonna be more about uh, organic fiber, like like a lot of times it can be based on peat or on cocoa pith or core. Uh, and so that's actually a soilless mix. Now what we're gonna talk about today is actually something for both of them. So what we have then is soil or soilless, but we want to you know, amend the soil. And there's so many different ways that you can amend soil. Um, you know, some of the more general ones that you can think of um, you know, probably uh, relate to maybe organic matter. Yeah, certainly. So anytime we're amending soil it's to treat a deficiency in that soil right and most most listeners would generally jump to nutrients and certainly any fertilizer amendment is uh, you know treating a deficiency with respect to nutrients but like I mentioned the relative proportions of sand silt and clay or if you're in a soilless media those have various properties and while they've been engineered to be great uh, growing environments for roots yeah. Uh, they may be limiting in their ability to retain nutrients or support biological activity. Um, you know, and in your outdoor garden, the soil you got is the soil you got. And adding more sand or adding more clay is not practical for changing those properties, but there are various amendments that we can add, um, like or compost, manure, organic matter sources, right? Or, sure. or biochar that dramatically, you know, improve the properties of those soils with respect to moisture nutrient holding, porosity, uh, and uh, you know, good airflow to support um, beneficial biology. Yeah, and I mean, it, it's interesting. I mean, you brought up biochar, and that is something we're gonna talk about uh, you know, during this video. Um, you know, this is a pretty new idea in agriculture, except it's actually a really old idea. Um, and this is actually sort of loosely based on the idea of terra preta down in the tropics. Yeah, yeah, in, was it Brazil? They found a lot of um, areas in, those are very weathered soils, right? In the tropics you get these because you've got these hot climates and a lot of rainfall. The soils tend to be very weathered and not very productive. This is a really good point for people because when you think about a jungle, you always think it must be so fertile. But really that soil, because of the heat, the biological activity is really thin. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's a great point. But these terra preta soils actually sort of change that dynamic. Yeah, and if I can just touch on that comment, it's if you look at a tropical environment, most of the nutrients in that system are tied up in the vegetation, sure. right? And very little of it because you get such a rapid turnover and breakdown of organic matter in the tropics um, you don't get a lot of it in the soil so if you cut down the forest and plant a garden they tend to not 
grow very well. Sure, exactly. Right? Whereas, you know, in a temperate climate, most of the nutrients in that system are probably 60% of them uh, are in the soil at any given time and the rest is in the vegetative mass, right? So in a tropical environment, uh, those, there's a lot that can be done to improve the productivity and they found these pockets of uh, enriched organic matter soils that were very productive and they traced those back to being you know former gardens of ancient civilizations. Yeah yeah I mean that anthropogenic soil I mean essentially it's just like uh, you know a lot of our growers are using soilless mixes at home that they're amending really similar I mean this was a lot of um, you know pottery plant residues um, char from the fire there was a variety of things that they've Sort of found in these layers an incredibly productive soil um, very difficult to replicate or even understand how it developed because of the age uh, you know of these uh, deposits um, but we definitely know that biochar on its own can produce some of the same effects as these um, really sort of um, rich dark soils in those those tropical rainforest areas and there's definitely some things that we should sort of touch on in terms of quality of char um, feedstock is one thing that's it's really important. What are you using to make the char? Um, what's the process? Um, you know, the best processes are always going to be sort of that low oxygen, using the gases to to really sort of cook down. And essentially, what you end up with a biochar is that. Um, well, technically what's called amorphous graphite, mm -hmm. but it's really a hard walled sponge. And that's the really exciting thing about biochar is what it can do for that soil as an amendment. Yeah, because it, you know, a well-made biochar using the proper feedstocks and uh, pyrolysis conditions yeah. will uh, have a very high surface area, right? And that's basically, I, I, I refer to it as a, a hotel for microbes, right? And it has uh, charged surfaces on it. So the nutrients are in the soil are attracted and, and lightly adhere to the surfaces of those of the biochar so they don't get flushed out with watering and they stay there for plant growth. Um, and it helps also hold a lot more moisture. Yeah, air and moisture. Air I mean, it, moisture. It, yeah, I mean, it's it, to me, it's almost like the edge effect. Like when you have a forest, the edge of the forest is the most productive. Mm -hmm. And that's really about surface area. So what you're saying on surface area at a microscopic level is exactly the same, whereas it gives more habitat, basically, for things to develop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a really interesting, uh, you know, organic amendment for soil. And we have taken biochar and made it the primary ingredient in our product black pearl um, so black pearl though is more than biochar so let's just I guess drill down on what's the main purpose and function behind adding biochar to the soil yeah so again it's to improve the those soil properties right sure. um, so even in a soilless mix that's been engineered you know peat uh, coco coir has a high water holding capacity um, while still maintaining good porosity yep. in it but uh, adding biochar can dramatically increase that. And it also, now while they can hold good moisture and have good uh, air circulation, they may not hold nutrients all that great and they yeah. may not be the best environment for supporting uh, like a living soil environment with all the beneficial microbes that yeah. yeah, and I think that's an important point about uh, the Black Pearl product as well, is that it's more than just biochar. Mm -hmm. You're also getting those organic chelates, um, different kelp extracts, and also um, different minerals um, from, from rock dust. Um, and all of those things kind of act together to improve soil quality, not by just improving the physical, but also, you know, letting biology uh, or giving biology the chance to use some of those additional supplements as well. And I mean, things like rock dust can be exceptional for, for biology. Exactly. And, you know, we're providing the house with the biochar, but you also need to provide a supermarket for those microbes to thrive and, and Black Pearl really considers all of that. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's an interesting thing about the industry for, for gardeners and growers out there is that everyone focuses on biology now, but they don't necessarily focus on how to keep that biology alive and sustainable within the rhizosphere. Um, and so it's really important to think about feeding soil, feeding biology just as much as it is feeding the plant. Exactly. You can't just add the biology and, and forget about it, right? If you really want to create that uh, balanced living soil environment, you need to provide for all the needs of the microbes, right? And, and that requires shifting focus a little bit from the plant to the soil, but in turn, the plant benefits from a, a healthier soil environment.
Thank you.